Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. <laughs> Bet you didn't think I was going to say that, did you? So what we're going to go over today is how to properly build a GDPR compliant cookie policy banner. Because what I see a lot of times nowadays is that people are building these cookie policies uh, and enabling people to accept. But if someone doesn't accept their cookie policy, they're still tracking those users. I've seen it in the past. So what we want to do is build a cookie policy that if it's not accepted, that uh, we don't make any calls to Google Analytics. But if they do, then we allow those calls. Now I'm going to build a very very simple version whereby basically if they don't want to accept the the cookie policy then they are constantly annoyed with the cookie uh, policy banner. If they do then the cookie the, the policy banner goes away. So some prerequisites here. I don't need to teach you how to create a cookie banner. Okay I've made one here very very basic with a basic accept button. I don't even need to tell you how to make a privacy policy page because you you should be linking to that privacy policy page um, for the people to read and understand where their cookies and uh, what how their cookies are being used and all the rest of it. Now you can generate a privacy policy just by searching online cookie policy or privacy policy generator. It's very very easy and it should get you going for most cases. You'll of course want to include your cookie policy on every single page that you have. So you might want to create a component or something like that. So you can see here I've made a very very basic version but what I'm going to do is is I've created a show class that shows its final position, but when the class is removed, then it goes off to the side of the page. That's the mechanism I'm gonna do. So if I'm gonna plan this code out, the user lands on a uh, on a page. I, I check the cookie, and if they have not accepted the cookie policy, then I'm gonna add that class to the, the privacy policy. If they click accept, I'm gonna set that cookie to say that they have accepted it. And then I'm gonna uh, uh, trigger the Google Analytics code that can run. So we're gonna dive into it, right in raw JavaScript. We have access to jQuery, so I might dip into a bit of jQuery, depending on how I'm feeling, I don't know. But we're gonna jump into some code and we're gonna make a properly GDPR compliant basic cookie policy banner. Now obviously you can get way more advanced in this sort of stuff. You can actually deny and, or allow certain cookies and, and whatever. I've seen examples where they do not allow you to turn off essential cookies and then you've got tracking cookies then under that that you can turn off and on and it sort of builds up in sort of you know more uh, more I've forgotten the word that I was going to use more basically more intrusive is what you're trying to say Sam. It's less private basically as you you know go up the chain. So you've got essential, basic uh, tracking of usage of the website and then you've got advertisements and things like that. So you can turn those off. We're not gonna do all that, but I'm gonna assume that you deem Google Analytics as essential cookies. But hopefully this tutorial will teach you that we should not be allowing any tracking whatsoever if the user has either turned it off, however you want to do that, or they've not accepted that cookie policy. To be properly GDPR compliant as well, we have to anonymize IP addresses through Google Analytics. So I'm going to show you how to do that. That's super simple. Um, and with that, then let's just dive into it. So I'm going to assume that you've got a Google Analytics account, that you've set up a GA4 property. Let's start from fresh. Go on. Why not? Let's go bonkers. So we've added our GA4 property. Um, and now we want a tracking code for this. So where do we get that? So I went to data streams here and we've got this view tag instructions. I'm instant manually. Now let's take this code. Now I want you to put this at the top of the head. So we want to apply this to every single page. So let's do that now. Oh, of course I need a site plan. So I'm gonna be buying a site plan just for you. $18, man, this shit is expensive. <laughs> oh, dude, you guys, what are you doing? Okay, so we bought it. Okay, the best we can do is at the end of the head, so let's do that. Pop that in there. So what we wanna do is write some JavaScript to kind of hide and show this um, banner. So let's give this cookie policy uh, policy an ID of cookie policy cookie uh, policy equals document dot query oh, let's get element by ID get element by ID is a little bit quicker so get element get element by ID 
So we've got our cookie policy. Next, we want to check for a cookie that does not exist right now. You can either store this in cookies. I find it a lot easier and a lot kind of simpler to use if we store it in local storage. Now, you've got two different types. You've got session storage and local storage. Session storage is literally within that session. The moment they close the window and then go back to your website, they're going to see that cookie policy again. Local storage is more permanent. So you can set expiry dates on those things, but the way I see it is if, is, is if someone accepts your cookie policy, they've accepted it. If you update those policies, you might want to then show them a new banner to, to make sure that they've accepted it again. But for me, local storage is a bit more modern way. Unless anyone's got any good reasons to why they want to use cookies, let's go with local storage. So if local storage, now we need to decide what we're going to call this cookie policy um, storage item. I'm going to call it cookie undersort underscore accepted so if that exists which right now oh sorry if it doesn't exist we want to show or add that class to the cookie policy so cookie policy uh, class list dot add and I think it was a show class so we're just going to do that let's just add that code in right now and just see how we get on so changes publish so there we go, you can see my cookie policy has appeared. Now what we wanna do is on the click of that cookie policy that we remove that show class and that we set that cookie. I've also given the button an ID uh, of cookie accept. So let's take that, D, cookie accept. Now we want to add event listener click so what we're going to do is go to local storage dot set item and we've named it cookie accepted and we're going to set that to true uh, and then we're also going to remove that show class now you can do some clever stuff with CSS to kind of have it fade out or fade in. I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, you can use GSAP to kind of transition it in, but unfortunately Webflow doesn't allow you to kind of create a preset animation and then fire, or at least I've not found a way to do that. I've tried looking into the code. It just, it's just a complicated mess. So um, we are going to remove that class. which is just going to pop off really. Uh, it's, it looks boring, but I don't want to take your creative control away from you. So once again, we've saved that. Let's just let's just prepare ourselves because we don't want to just dive in and and check that everything's going to work. So obviously, if the class gets removed, then that's going to go away. So that's really easy to see. But what we want to do is if we go to if we inspect the page and we go through to application. Now you can go to local storage and then click on the domain. You'll see that there's a couple of um, items in there that Webflow has set in the local storage. I'm expecting our cookie accepted to be uh, to populate in here uh, when I click that button. So let's just see how we get on. So I'm clicking around and then accept it's disappeared and I can see cookie accepted in the window. Now the true test is now when I refresh, will I see that cookie policy? Just hit refresh no cookie policy. So let's get on to actually preventing Google Analytics from firing or, you know, tracking your website unless you've got that cookie. So we already know how to check for a cookie um, or in our case, local storage um, cookie accepted, was it? Um, so all we're going to do is simply move that code it just won't fire unless that cookie policy is accepted so once again if we just go here okay i've been wrestling around with webflow for the last 15 minutes basically the old um, google analytics code was still in the in the website because i noticed the old one was still being loaded into the page so i added the new one but what seems to have happened is even though i've removed my Google Analytics tag from the back end of Webflow, it's still inside of the HTML of my website. Uh, you've got the old one there. This is my old one. The, 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 the non-GA4 one is still in there for some reason. And this is the new one. 
So I'm constantly getting readings basically up to Google Analytics, which is kind of going to ruin how I test this and, and kind of show that it's working. But we're going to push on because maybe, maybe you have not used Webflow's backend to load your Google Analytics. So let's just push on and see how we get on. We've added an if statement to say only if the cookie accepted local storage item exists, then what we're going to do we're going to create a script element. This was all done whilst I was testing, so I'm just going to go through it. We're going to make it async. We're going to make it that source that you should have in your, which is given to you in the tag instructions, and then we're going to add it to the head. And then we're going to fire off our G tag functions, right? And the last thing we're going to do here is to, we're going to anonymize IP so that we are GDPR compliant. So if I save this and publish it, oh, there's a syntax error. What we're going to do, we're going to refresh this page and because I've removed our local storage item, we're going to see our pop, uh, cookie policy banner pop up. So refreshed, lo and behold, the cookie policy banner is still up there. We inspect the code and now I should not see any kind of reference. Of, <laughs> well, we've got this reference and we've got uh, one up here as well. So other than those two, we shouldn't see any reference to the code here. What I'm going to do is accept our cookie policy banner refresh the page and then I should expect to see a new script tag. So we've accepted. Now I'm going to refresh. Scroll down to the bottom. So here is that script tag that we added to the page. So now we're just going to go one step further now and add this Google tag page to the page as soon as they click that accept button instead of waiting for a page refresh to have that happen. So all we're simply going to do is go back into Google Tag Manager. We're going to copy this code here and then add it into our click function. So we save that, publish. We're going to remove our cookie accepted and refresh the page so we see our banner which we do. Now if I go to our elements here, pop into our head and just scroll down to the bottom, what I expect to see is the script tag get added to the page when I click this accept button. And there it is, get added to the page. So I hope you enjoyed that as a bit of a blast from the past, wasn't it really, to uh, dip into a bit of Webflow. If you've got any other questions about any kind of GDPR related stuff, I'll do my best to answer those in the comments, but I'm by no means an expert around this about this stuff. I just kind of know a few of the technicalities behind it. Do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more tutorials like this with no code tools like Webflow and PineGrow. And also join my Discord, which I'll leave a link to in the, in the description, where you can kind of ask me questions or keep up to date with what's going on and the various things I have going on. So until next time, happy no coding.